to the far east of the Dark Lands lies one of the largest and most dangerous kingdoms known in the world of Warhammer. Yet this is a place that not too many have been able to witness with their own eyes. But the few who have gone there and actually made it back tell tales of massive ogres that wander the mountains, of unnatural blizzards that never end, and rare creatures not found elsewhere. This kingdom is mostly made up of the commonly obese ogres, giant humanoid beings with a never satisfied appetite for fighting and potentially more importantly, eating. What started as a nomadic group of seemingly wandering ogres soon became a legitimate power within the world, controlling the vast territory known commonly as the Mountains of Morn. Within their own hard-earned homeland, the ogre kingdoms are made up of several tribes that constantly fight for power and control of the titanic mountain range. While there are countless tribes of ogres that live nomadically throughout both the Old and New World and offer their services as mercenaries in exchange for payment, the true pride and glory of this massive race lies with the ogre kingdoms established within the territory surrounding the mountains. This is partly due to the fact that ogres that live there spend less time moving their homes and can instead focus on fighting, eating, and building up infrastructure until permanent settlements were built, almost akin to cities. When not feasting and gorging themselves with tremendous amounts of food and drink, these savage warriors pillage and loot any village or settlement that stakes a claim too close to the Mountains of Morn. While the ogre race is not known for being very intellectual, it is not the case that they are mindless and have incorporated both magic and even machines into their society. Their battle scars, huge bellies, battle paint and size are traits that they are regarded with high status. What comes from this is a kingdom of incredibly strong and relentless warriors that count with the support of sorcery, war beasts, and even crudely built firearms, among other machinations to their disposal. The main driver and motivation for these ogres is to eat everything, as to satisfy their ever-hungry bellies. They don't see the foes as rivals per se, but as living beings that need to be crushed and eaten to establish dominance. Their will to fight depends on the loot and the meals that will be theirs after the battle. They do not write down their own history as the ogres cannot read or write. They are only concerned about where their next meal is going to come from. But by the oral tales told from generation to generation and the ancient and crude cave drawings found in dark and long lost places, one can start to have an idea as to how and why these strange creatures exist. The variety of clans play a vital role in the organized military of the Ogre Kingdoms, and when these brutes decide to work together, it results in an incredibly versatile army. The lowest tier of soldiers in the armies of the Ogre Kingdoms are the small creatures called Noblars, relatives of the forest goblins that often are part of the Greenskin tribes throughout the Old World. Noblars play several roles within the Ogre military, whether it is running supply lines, acting as missile units, operating siege equipment, or even directly fighting in melee engagements with spears or any variety of crude weaponry. In desperate occasions, they are even used as meat shields by the Ogres. After Noblars, there are the Ogre Bulls. A common melee unit type, which use large one-handed clubs and act as the main bulk of the front line. These are adult ogres, huge in size and musculature, able to punch down gates, wrestle with big creatures or crush a man's skull with their hands. 
there are also the feral gorges, a subspecies of the ogres who usually inhabit the dark caverns underneath the mountains of Morn, but are often used to sow chaos throughout the battlefield without needing the use of weapons, and instead rely on sharp claws to shred any enemy deemed a threat. There are several other types of melee units within the Ogre Kingdoms, ranging from the infamous veteran man-eaters that usually use clubs, however they have also been known to dual wield for extra damage, or even use great hammers in the event that they are fighting enemies that are equipped with heavy armor. While man-eaters are used commonly as supplement melee infantry, they also play a key part in the ranged and missile forces of the Ogre Army. Ranged man-eater units often bring Ogre Hand Cannon Pistols, which, while suffering in long-range accuracy, offer a compact and powerful weapon that can devastate infantry lines that approach the Ogres prior to initiating melee combat. It should also be mentioned that in the event that the opposing force can close the distance between them and the ranged man-eater units, these ogres can handle themselves in melee combat with their raw muscle and melee weapons. Then, while considered a war beast, the ogres often bring giants for maximum destruction and are used to fit multiple roles, whether for sieges, to assist the front lines, or to just cause chaos, fear and confusion, which can often lead to mass routs of the enemy. For longer range engagements, the ogre unit known as the Lead Belchers carry large handheld cannons that can obliterate most enemies from incredible distances. The artillery contraptions must be mentioned when discussing the roster of the average Ogre Kingdom army. The first artillery piece to mention is the Noblar Scrap Launcher, which is a standard piece of equipment used when dealing with enemy infantry. The Scrap Launcher is a massive catapult often pulled by a war beast, such as a Rhinox, and is controlled by a team of Noblars specifically trained for the task. As the name suggests, this weapon hurls massive piles of scrap with frightening accuracy and range, as it spreads clouds of metal pieces and spiky bits in the air to fall down and shred entire regiments of warriors. When the ogres need something with more punch, especially when dealing with larger targets, they employ the use of iron blasters, massive cannons whose shots can be heard across vast distances and are often so heavy that aside from being maintained by noblars, have to be towed with strong war beasts. These weapons show the true horror that an army of massive and extremely strong ogres with a limited intelligence can be capable of, and should make any opposing force, no matter the size of the army, seriously consider any potential engagement with the ogre tribes. Those ogres belonging to the Horned Gut tribe have been known to reinforce armies with monstrous cavalry, as well as other creatures, such as ogres riding upon Mornfangs, large and bloodthirsty creatures that use their deadly tusks to break through enemy ranks like a hot knife through butter. When facing large units like enemy cavalry and larger beasts, the ogres can use Rhinox as mounts which help protect the armies from flank attacks, as well as hunt beasts that stray far from the protection of other units. The Horned Gut tribes also incorporate the use of Sabre Tusk hunting packs, which are used to hunt weakened and poorly defended units, as well as flanking main battle lines to help break and demoralize the enemy army. Finally, one cannot neglect to mention the massive behemoth of a creature known by many as stone horns. These titanic monsters use both giant horns and stone-like hooves to decimate anything that stands in their way, and are also known to carry weapon platforms like harpoon guns and scrap launchers for added range capabilities. Aside from those unfortunate few that become corrupted by the Lords of Chaos, the majority of ogres worship their own deity, 
known as the Great Maw. While those belonging to the Ogre Kingdoms believe this to be a godlike deity, most Imperial scholars have concluded that the entity itself is simply the remnants of a massive meteor strike that caused a massive jagged hole in a mostly inhospitable land. Regardless of whether the Great Maw is an actual entity, or just the result of a celestial impact, the Ogres devote their lives to appeasing it. This is done by dedicating victories in battles, or filling their stomachs to the limit with the spoils of war, either cooked or still moving. Certain ogres with a proficiency for magic can focus the powers of the Great Maw to cast spells to support their armies, either defensively or offensively. Ogre spellcasters are not limited to just the lore of the Maw, and those known as Firebellies use magic that is derived from another ogre deity, known as the Firemouth. Of all the leaders of the ogre clans, there are none more renowned and feared than Greasus Goldtooth. This self-proclaimed king is the leader of Clan Goldtooth, and the current Overtyrant, demanding fealty from all of the leaders and their respective clans. This massive leader is adorned with a shining crown, and is covered with countless rubies and other rare gemstones, either gained through gifts, or resulting from pillaging, raiding, and looting. If not to emphasize the savagery of the Ogre race prior to becoming the Overtyrant of the Ogre Kingdoms, assume the role of Tyrant from the Goldtooth Clan after defeating and eating the previous leader, who also happened to be his father. After taking the leadership of the Goldtooth Clan, Greasus' power only increased, becoming Lord of all Ogres within the Kingdoms as well as even reaching out to other races, such as the nation of Cathay. There was a time when Greasus was able to arrange a deal with Cathay, where he would allow their caravans and traders to pass through his land safely, as long as he was given regular payments. The hunger of Ogus knows no bounds, however, for Greasus, his greed for riches and power appears to be limitless as well. When the Ogre King feels the need to join his forces in battle, he is usually carried atop a throne held by countless Noblars, while he flails at any enemy close enough to him with his massive bejeweled mace with one hand, while eating a piece of meat with the other. Aside from Goldtooth, one of the other most known ogres in the world of Warhammer is the most devout follower of the Great Maw, and goes by the name of Scrag the Slaughterer. Originally, Scrag was second in command to the ogre tyrant known as Bronn Rockgrinder. However, he fell from the tyrant's grace after accidentally cooking and serving one of Bronn's favorite noblars. This enraged Bronn so much that in a fit of rage he tore both of Scrag's arms off and exiled the humiliated ogre to the caves beneath the mountain that was occupied by the Tyrant's clan. Prior to being exiled, Scrag was a butcher for the tribe and his role involved processing meat for food. He was well respected, especially within a culture as oriented towards eating as the ogre kingdoms. Fortunately for Scrag, his tools were still with him, and decided to jam them into his arm sockets, replacing what used to be hands with deadly weapons. Within the cave, the ogre was attacked by a group of beasts, which caused no true threat to the slaughterer. After killing the alpha of those unfortunate beasts, the other creatures stopped their attack, and even welcomed Scrag with respect, and eventually, loyalty. The ogre soon led an assault with the help of his newly allied beasts on his former tribe, and after defeating his former leader, he pledged his undying service to the Great Maw. 
On the battlefield, Scrag utilizes the butchering tools now attached to his body, able to slash through countless enemies with frightening efficiency. The slaughterer also drags his famous meat pot with the use of chains connected to his body, thus having the ability to recover mid-battle with a quick snack. As a firm believer and the primary prophet of the Great Maw, Scrag is a competent user of gut magic, which causes devastating effects to any that are targeted by his spells. Whether his magic is used to cause destruction to the enemy ranks, or to bolster his own ogres, Scrag has many ways to win a battle against most foes. While there have been cases of ogres falling victim to the corruption of the Chaos Gods, they have a natural resistance to its control and mutations, making them quite effective at repelling the demon armies. Although they have a biological resistance to mutation, and consequently, the effects of chaos, this does not mean they are immune, and has led to a small subfaction of the ogres, which broke off from the kingdoms known as the Chaos Ogres. While their numbers are much smaller than those of the Ogre Kingdoms, those that have fallen to chaos cause a massive problem for anything that gets too close to their encampments. As feared and hated by much of the races in the world of Warhammer as the Ogre Kingdoms are, their military prowess as well as natural resistance to the influences of chaos make these brutes a key deciding factor in the fate of the world when the time comes that the forces of chaos bring forth another invasion. The ignorance and hatred must be set aside for when this time comes as it will take the effort of all races to thwart the plans of the Dark Lords, and if all do not band together, the world shall be drowned in darkness. The new mountains gave us shelter. We made fire in their mouths. The tribes split the lands. The tyrants roared and fought. There were many kingdoms. It was good for many winters. The tribes grew and grew too much. Now we follow the sun once more. On this channel, we are putting together narrative Total War cinematic battles and Warhammer lore videos. A special thank you goes to our Patreon supporters who help us in the making of more content. You can also join Patreon and earn extra perks while supporting the videos to come. Find the link in the description below. Make sure to subscribe and thank you for watching. See you on the next one.